Here is the basic syntax for a for loop in Python. So you have the word for, then any variable name you want, then in, and then something that contains a collection of elements. So in this case, this we think of as containing the elements 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, even if it doesn't literally contain those, it holds like the information of those elements. And so for each of those five steps, 0 through 4, in the for loop, it's going to print this string high. Okay, so there's a basic example. What if I said instead of print high? Okay, notice that high is in quotation marks. Here I is not in quotation marks. So this I represents the same variable as this one. So it shows 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Another example, what if I want to do both of these things? Okay, I think that's pretty understandable. And now uh, let me do something that maybe looks very similar. So uh, there's a huge difference between these two, and it's something you have to get used to in Python, and that is that indentation is important. So, for example, within a for loop, the indented lines are the ones that get repeated. So these two get repeated every iteration through the for loop. Whereas in this case, because only one line is indented, that is the only line that gets re repeated in the for loop. And then when the for loop is finished, then we print i, which in this case was 4 at that point. Okay, so there is no end afterwards. Okay, in MATLAB, there would be an end here, end. But that's just one of the many little syntactical differences between Python and MATLAB. Let's do something a little more interesting. Let's make a length 12 list that goes 3, 10, 3, 10, okay, and so on for six total repetitions of the 3 and the 10. And I'm going to start out making an empty list. So if you have square brackets with nothing inside, that gives you a length 0 list. And then for i in range 6, and I'm going to say my list dot append 3, then my list dot append 10. And let's run it. And then let's look at my list. And does it have the right length? Yep, good. Let's try let's try a slightly different way of doing it. Say instead of append, say we use extend. And so here we're putting the elements from this little length to list at to the, onto the end of my list. So let's try that. So uh, we get the same element there. Maybe I'll do one more just showing how we could make this inside of NumPy. So I haven't imported it yet, so let's import NumPy as NP. And I'm going to use the built-in function, or built-in is the wrong phrase. I'm going to use the numpy function ones. So let's get some information about it by putting a question mark afterwards. And so the first input is supposed to be a shape, which is an integer or a sequence of integers. So it could be a tuple like this or a single integer. So if I do numpy.1s12, then I get this length 12, I can't call it a list, I get this length 12 numpy array of all ones. Okay, if I'd rather have it be without this decimal point here that's indicating that it's a floating point number, okay, I can say dtype equals int. Okay, now you can see that those decimal points went away. And I can get the 0, 2nd, 4th, and so on elements in the following way. So let's see, let me name this as A. And so if I say, go from 0 to the end, go up by 2, I should get some length 6 array. And now I can assign all of those elements to be 3. And let's look at A. 
So it made the zeroth go up by two, the second, the fourth, the sixth, the eighth, the tenth elements all equal to three. And so what, what should I do if I want to make the odd elements equal to ten? Well, I just have to start at one, again, go to the end, go up by two, and make this equal to ten. And if I really want to have a list instead of a NumPy array, so if I ask what's the type of this, it's a NumPy array, and I can make it into a list by wrapping it inside of list like this. Okay, that's where I'll stop the video. Thank you for watching.